Hey guys, if you want to learn how a repeatable and scalable structure for successful POCs looks like, I hope this video helps you. My name is Sasha and I work for Snowflake as a sales engineer for almost four years now and I worked for almost 10 years total in pre-sales as a sales engineer and before that I had a career in software development where I worked for big tech companies for instance telecommunication giants such as Nokia and Ericsson and I've led a ton of POCs as a sales engineer obviously but I've also participated as a customer in vendor POCs so I've learned a lot about how or what makes a POC successful and which mistakes to avoid and in this video I'm going to be sharing that experience by talking about five milestones for a POC, then how a POC execution document looks like, what should be in that document, and finally how to structure and run the POC readout meeting. And here's a big bonus. You can download everything I'm showing in this video as a template. Just check the description below. All right, guys, let's get into it and talk about the five milestones of the POC process. And this is how I do it. The first one is the intro. And the intro is where I actually present this whole process to the customer, exactly what I'm explaining now. And that's usually just like a one hour meeting. And all it takes in this meeting is to go through the steps, through the milestones and align on the process with the customer. We want to get the customer to clearly understand what's expected from them and what we are going to deliver. And at the end of this meeting, the customer exactly knows how we are going to structure the PUC and what they can expect. So now that we are aligned with the customer on how the whole process is going to look like, we go into the actual scoping meeting or discovery. Hopefully we did a lot of discovery before, so this is not going to take a lot of time. And for the scoping, it's really important that we determine what and why, what we are doing and why we are doing it with the aim that we are all aligned at the end of this activity on the value that we want to deliver. And the second part of that workshop is to do the actual project planning. We want to nail down who exactly and when are they going to deliver task by task, really nail it down to details. You want to know who is responsible for what, with tasks, owner, delivery date, and preferably like a status field so that you can track it as the POC progresses. Okay, now we are coming to the meat, to the essence of the POC, and this is the execution of the POC. It can take actually anywhere from couple of hours to, to several weeks depending on the type of product so take this with a grain of salt and the first part I do in this activity is to enable customer it's usually like a quick start the walkthrough of the product where they get their first bearing they understand how the product works we want the customer to get the feel of the product and to get their hands dirty and because this is what sells the product and then we do the formal kickoff one our meeting maybe the beginning of the week where we all agree that we all now have committed our resources and we are starting the POC. Everybody knows what they have to do and now we are really engaging 100% on the POC. So just again alignment that the POC is now officially starting. And then what I do is regular check-ins and this can vary from anywhere uh, from like one week cadence to daily cadence depending on how intensive and how much hands-on help will the customer need. And what I like to do as well is have one or two status meetings where we meet with all the stakeholders of the PC just to inform them where we are. And all these activities that I've listed here, they serve to mitigate the risk and making sure that they are keeping to the timelines and sticking to the deliveries and the dates that we agreed on. And after the execution, after we've done all these items and we have delivered everything that has been agreed in the PC, we come to the last milestone, which is the readout. And the readout, uh, usually it's like a meeting that lasts maybe two hours. You want to do this with a customer you know, face to face, looking them in the eyes, maybe having lunch afterwards to get the informal feedback. The AE, the account executive is in lead here. So they are going to be the ones presenting the POC readout document. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the content of this document. So keep watching. It's really important that your technical champion, the guy that was in charge of the POC on the customer side, actually presents the POC goals and then what has been achieved in the POC because when it comes from their mouth it's going to make a bigger impact for all the stakeholders on the customer side and it's important that in this meeting we have the EB so we have the economic buyer the guy who is or lady who is in the end going to have the budget and sign the deal and all the other stakeholders in this decision whoever has a saying or has an influence should also be in this meeting where we demonstrate the results of the POC and the overall goal of course is to demonstrate the win to demonstrate that 
our product does indeed deliver what was promised in the slides, you know, before the POC. That's it. Those are the five milestones. And this is what really scales. There's not a lot of involvement. Just look at the times here. You have this kickoff, you have like a half day workshop, and then you have periodic check-ins after the execution starts. You have that one or two hours enablement, and then you have two hours of the readout. So if you calculate all that, it's maybe two days of your own work to deliver a POC win. I think this is repeatable and this is scalable. Now that we understand how to structure that POC and what the milestones are, how much time it takes and what the value is from all of those milestones, let's talk about what kind of document, what kind of template I usually use when I do my POCs. So it has five or six elements and you can do this as a Word document, you can do this as a PowerPoint presentation, whatever you like. The first thing I usually put into this slide is that process description, those five milestones. We want this to be on the first slide so the customer, when they open this presentation, they always can you know, go in and say, ah, that's how the process looks like. This is what where we are now and this is where we are going. So the next thing that I want to have in that document is the business challenge description. Why do we need this? Well, we want everyone to again be able to jump into that document and always kind of remember why we are doing this. And we also want our technical champion to be aware and to think about the end business goal. So we want to describe the goal. We want to describe what benefit they will have from our solution in reaching this goal. And we also want to put here explicitly why they can't solve it today. And that could be for a number of reasons. Ideally, it is something that our technology can fix. That's why we are doing the POC. The next thing I like to have in that document is an architectural diagram. Now, thinking about the diagram, this really heavily depends on the type of product you're selling. I like to kind of draw up that architecture and explain how my product fits into that architecture and what products it's going to replace or what process is going to replace. Our champion will internally have to sell this to the stakeholders as well. And it's always easier to have like a picture that always says a thousand words. Another reason is we do this architecture together with the customers. So they already think about things in advance and they're better prepared for a future project. So we are kind of preparing them to think about the actual project when it comes to the implementation after we close the deal. And now we are actually getting to describing what is going to be done in the POC, which is use cases and criteria. We want to nail down as precise as we can what use cases we are tackling and what is the success criteria. So it has to have a description, but it has also to have a column. It's usually I make it a table, like a spreadsheet. So it has a column that says successful if. So this is the condition when we have proved the value, the success of this use case. Imagine we are selling a marketing product and the use case would be marketing campaign data available in real time. And in that successful if column, we can write one minute latency. So the success criteria for this use case is maximum of one minute latency for campaign data. And that's enough for the customer. And this is how we demonstrate the value. And also we want to add another column, which is how. And sometimes this is going to be the actual doing. So they have to implement something. They have to do something. But in other cases, let's say we want to demonstrate a high availability of our platform. It's probably enough to talk about this on slides and demonstrate all the mechanisms and maybe tell a couple of customer stories. And the last thing we want to do is we want to designate who the owner is of this use case, who is responsible for, for testing it. And now that we have nailed down those use cases and criteria, let's talk about the prerequisites that have to be fulfilled in order for the POC to kick off. So these prerequisites should have a dedicated place in the document and they should be clearly stating the actions that a customer has fulfilled so that they are able to test our product. For instance, if we are selling firewall products, they have to do something with the network. Maybe they have to onboard our people. All of these things that have to happen so that from the day of kickoff, the customer has full access to the product and then can proceed and test the product and do the POC as we agreed. 
And here's the last thing I want to have in this document, and that's the actual project plan, the activity plan. And this thing drives the POC execution. As we talked about, it's important to have the deliverable specified, the owner specified, the due date. And I like to have like a status column. This is usually a table. And in this status column, I will track the execution progress. We have those check-ins, those stand-up meetings where the team members on the customer side report on the progress, and that's what I like to track. And now that we have talked about the five milestones of the POC process, and we have structured that POC document, let's talk about that last step, the last milestone in the POC process, which is the actual POC readout document. Now, first of all, why is the POC readout even important? If this is the POC timeline, we had the POC execution, and what we are striving for, obviously, is the deal. And the POC readout meeting is the first meeting after the execution of POC where we get the chance or we should have the chance to talk to the EB and all involved stakeholders about how the POC went. So we want to go into this meeting to present the results of the POC and that's called POC readout meeting. For this meeting, because it's so important, we want to have the right participants. Of course, we'll have the sales team. We'll also have our champion, and our champion was involved in the POC, so they kind of know what's been going on. But the stakeholders, we don't know if they were informed about the success of the POC. So we want the stakeholders, and that's the EB, all the others who have a saying in the decision, to be present at the meeting. And what is the content? Well, the content is, again, probably a PowerPoint presentation. AE is leading that presentation, and they want first to do a short introduction about our product. Why our product? This shouldn't be too long, but we have to assume that some of the stakeholders have never heard our product pitch. So this should be a very, very, very condensed product pitch. The next thing we want to have is like a side-by-side -side comparison of current state versus future state. Current state is without our product, future state is with our product, but not the architecture. We want here to describe the actual business impact, what they couldn't do in the current state and what they're going to be able to do with our product in the future state. And then the next thing is to tie the POC goals into that future state. So we are trying to prove that future state and that's what the POC was about. We want the customer to put that check mark to confirm that what we've been saying on the slides is been proved within the POC. That's why it's called proof of concept. And these POC goals and achievements of the POC that's maybe going to be a couple of slides. Ideally, we want the champion to talk about this. We want the champion to describe the problem and the solution with our product and show the results like speed achieved or time to market or mitigation of risk or how much more revenue is the customer going to generate with our product. We want the technical champion to talk about that. And finally, the A comes back and then they talk about the cost, the projected cost of the solution. We have presented the value. We now have to put the cost against that so the customer gets the full picture of what they need to invest in order to get the value. And we need to have a summary slide that kind of summarizes the whole deal, which is we did a POC to prove that this is the business value that you are getting and this is how much it costs you and these are the savings and these are the other business benefits. One slide because this is going to be the slide that's probably going to be discussed internally and if somebody needs to give some other stakeholder a summary, they're probably going to jump into such slides so you have to have a slide like that. And with this readout, your role as a sales engineer basically ends. The A takes it from here and now they have to do the negotiations and all the other parts of closing the deal, but you have done your part, you have executed the POC, you have demonstrated the win, and that's where your job ends for this opportunity. And that's it, guys. In this video, I've talked about how to create a repeatable and scalable structure that will help you win your POCs every time. I've explained the five milestones of the POC process. I've talked about how a POC execution document looks like. And I also have talked about the content and how to do that POC readout meeting, that crowning achievement of the whole POC activity. I'm curious to hear how you do your POCs. So let me know down below in the comments or connect with me on LinkedIn and let's continue this conversation. If you like this video, please click on that like button and subscribe for more content like this. For instance, watch this video to learn why POCs fail and how to avoid that. Thanks for watching this video. Stay healthy and stay tuned.